All right, everyone. Welcome to episode 24, the Christmas episode Woo! of Orlando Out of Context. I'm Brian. I'm Stephanie. And please make sure that you follow us on Instagram at Orlando Out of Context and visit us at OrlandoOutOfContext.com and then make sure you listen and subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, and Google Play. Five stars. Five stars. <laughs> today we have a special guest with us today. We have Ron. Welcome, hey. Ron. Hey, hey, girl. Hey. So we're going to be talking about all the Christmas stuff there is to do in Orlando. So over, we as a as the three of us here, we've spent a lot of Christmases together um, doing a lot of stuff in Orlando, which is, you know, kind of special because you grow up doing your own, like, family traditions. And then, you know, when you move somewhere else, you have to kind of, like, get new traditions. So we're going to go over all the stuff there is to do in Orlando today. But first Every of all... Every single little thing. Let's talk, <laughs> let's talk to Ron. How did you uh, come to Orlando? And how long have you been living here? I think through every single person you ever talked to, everybody, the Walt Disney World College program. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Which Ron, uh, along with you, Stephanie, would probably... I've known uh, Ron for as long as I've lived in Orlando. Like from the moment Just I moved. a long time. Yeah, it's a long time I re- 14 years. Is it 14? 14 years oh. from now, we're going to be almost 50. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I don't want to think about that. I'm fine with that. All right, let's go. I my mind is 50, but I don't want my body. Which is to be fine because you know what? We're coming to that time of year where everyone can be a child. <laughs> so you you started on the college program like most uh, people that we talk to in this area that we are in, in the attractions area. The what was your first time. role in the Walt Disney World Company? I was a Jungle Cruise skipper. That's a job everybody wants. It was <laughs> awesome. I was this quiet kid from Maine who had was terrified of everyone. And thrown on a jungle cruise with 40 random strangers listening to the worst possible jokes. You know, the Love jobs it. like that, they really bring you out. Like, I think about when I was on the program and I came here. I was like that, too. I was, like, really, like, soft-spoken and a little bit shy in public. But then, you know, you get forced into these roles that you would never have chosen mm-hmm. for yourself. And it really helps you to develop your personality. And some horrible jokes. To this day, I love corny jokes. Ugh. And we're we're actually going to talk about jungle the cruise. Jingle Jungle Cruise. They put a Christmas overlay on the jung- the Jungle Cruise ride, so we'll talk about that later. But all right, so what's first on our list? So Ron has put a list together for he us. He made a little book report. Well, there's a lot in Orlando. There's a lot. There's the theme parks. There's outside the theme parks. So I thought first hitting off all the theme parks and starting at Walt Disney World. My favorite With place. The most obvious one. Mickey's very Merry Christmas party. Which I attended this year and And I will attend on the twenty first. Yes. Of December. The twenty first from what I read is probably gonna be the busiest one of the year. I'm it's sure, the last one of the I'm season. Sure it will be. Yep. They run from seven o'clock to midnight. Tickets range from ninety four dollars to one hundred twenty five dollars, which is ridiculous. It's crazy. Redonkulous. But you Disney. know what? You get what you pay for. But I always felt that the Christmas party was the weakest of the part. The so we always parties. talk about how the Halloween party is a deal because you get kind of depending on the day that you go, you get a lot for your price. But for the Christmas party, um, the last like the week of Christmas, and maybe the week before everything that you pay for the Christmas party can be seen during regular park hours. If you go during that week of Christmas. Yes. Right, Ron? When it's crazy busy. But Correct. that when is the drawback, busy. that it is crazy busy, which you don't get at the parties because they have the, you know, the limited attendance at the parties. And you get the snacks. You do. You get so cookies tell, and milk. You, you uh, have you been this year? I have not been in like five or six years but stephanie went and she yes. said the snacks are better this year so they, why why but, are the snacks different now? so they have a when you get your map they have different stations throughout the park and each station has different snacks one station has snow cones and mm. uh snowman shaped pretzels one has like snickerdoodles and hot chocolate one has peppermint cookies um the station by Pinocchio's they give you like five cookies of all different flavors. And That's a lot. They it's... have one station has eggnog, so they have like you can hit all the stations. Before it used to be just one hot co- chocolate, yeah. two cookies. cookies and one hot chocolate at one spot. 
So now they have like all over and only and, only chocolate chip. And well, I remember them having multiple spots, but having the same cookies. Correct. Yeah. yeah, same cookies. Yeah. Basic. So for those who haven't who haven't been to a, a party at Magic Kingdom, whether it be Halloween or it be Christmas, the park closes at seven o'clock for day guests, and the party begins at seven o'clock and goes to midnight. But with your party ticket, you can get in as early as four o'clock. Mm-hmm. And the best advice I found is the tickets range because this is doing that variable pricing now. Yes. So if you find lower price nights, that means it's going to be slower. So it's a win all around. You pay less money, you get a lot less people. Usually, those are the dates during the week or early earlier and like the furthest from christmas will be the cheapest and then getting more expensive (laughs) towards the holiday but you get to see the parade you know like the parade that everyone sees on christmas morning and you get the magical how the magical christmas wishes fireworks and they have all the characters like dressed up in sweaters and like their winter wear they had all seven dwarfs in one picture which is do they have like, a, you'll never see that. Do they have a ever. castle stage show for that? They do. They have they a do. Christmas one. They and they do the, the Frozen show. Holiday Wish, too, where they do the castle lights. Yeah. And you can actually see that without a special event ticket. If you have a regular ticket, uh, we went, Stephanie and I went the other night, and it was at, what, 6.15? 6.15. It was 6.15. Um, and it was just on any night of the week. It just doesn't have to be a party I think night. it's the, how they light the castle every, every night, night yeah. during the holiday season. The only thing I would say with the parade, it is I thought it was very different from the one that you see on TV. Well, yes, but very different. that's true. No celebrities. No celebs. Um, you don't see... Uh, what's his name? Ryan Seacrest. He's not there. Um, <laughs> it actually feels less Mario Lopez. In he's not there. <laughs> uh, what's that little girl's name? Kelly? Kelly and Regis? Regis and Kelly? You mean They're not there. Kelly and Ryan. Kelly yeah, Ryan. Kelly and Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> They're not there. But I did see them. Like, when we, we used to work there, I used to remember seeing them film all the time and being like, oh, there they are. <laughs> well, and it's funny because they record that, like, I think last month. They record yeah. that weeks ahead of time. Right. It's very heavily edited. Yeah, people think it's live, but it's not live at all. So, so, so do, we give, do we give it thumbs up? Like I give it a thumbs up. I mean... I bought a ticket, so I guess I give it a thumbs up. <laughs> I give it a thumbs up. I but think... I think for the experience, it's beautiful. You have I to mean, do it at least. They once. blow snow off the roofs of Main Street, like it's magical. I give it thumbs up. I give it thumbs up, but I give even bigger thumbs up for the Halloween party. Yeah. It was funny in my research. I kept googling Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. <laughs> like, wait, no, wrong holiday. I wrong did holiday. that too when I was pulling up the page. I did that too. <laughs> Because you just get so used to putting that. I don't know why. And I would just say, I think it's the kind of event you have to do at least once. Yeah. I don't know if it's something I'd want to do every year. The Halloween party is something I do every single year, but this is something that I... So are we going to talk then about the jingle... Oh, yeah. Let's talk about the jingle jungle... What is the official name of it? You know, I don't jing- know. I think I've it's a jingle. This. I think it's you've a never jingle. done it. They've no, never done when it. When I was there, we didn't do this. What? Yeah. They've been doing it for like three years here. It's a jingle cruise, not the jingle jungle. What? That was jingle you're. Jingle you're jingle. I'm making stuff up with the um the parade. Uh, at the jingle an- jungle jam <laughs> yeah. jamboree or something from Animal Kingdom, the old parade from Animal Kingdom, but no, jingle cruise way cute. So they overlay the whole attraction with Christmas decorations, and then like the skippers, they wear um, a hat that matches their jungle costume, and they tell Christmas jokes. Yeah, they throw in not the whole thing is not Christmas jokes, but they throw in quite. Oh a Oh my few gosh, Christmas it's, jokes. it's I cute. really don't like this ride on a normal basis, but I really like the. <gasps> say that because i'm just i hate i'm i'm irritable with those stupid jokes <laughs> but i think that our version of the jungle cruise here in florida is my favorite version of the jungle cruise i don't know if you've been to disneyland i or have not else. i just know it's got the backside of water and that's all you should ever need in your life well i think oh, they, yeah. both, they both have backside but mm-hmm. this one has the um like the when we ruin, went on the lady the was ruins. like it was windy and you could feel like a mist from it and she was like Earth. do you guys feel that it's bacteria <laughs> <laughs> She was really good. What's her the name? gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> I can't remember what her name was. I don't she think was I really looked good. at her tag. But Jingle Cruise is cute. It's like a plane crashed and all the Christmas decorations like just splur- like flew throughout the jungle. It's crashed in the jungle and all the packages and everything went everywhere. But it's cute. 
I like it. All right, Ron. Keep us going. So the next thing would be over at Epcot, the International Festival of the Holidays. I think this is something they did in 2016 that they just brought back again this year. So no, this skip is a year? Or have, is it every year? This is every year. This is a long time Disney tradition, actually. It's very uh, old. And at Disneyland, they actually only have one... They have one night of it, but here at Walt Disney World, they do it three times a oh, night for well, the you whole did your season. research. Well, I used to be part of the cast choir for like five years. I sang in this show. But, but is this the not, same as We're talking as about something different. Well, you're, you're getting ahead of yourself. Oh. Say, say it again. The oh, we're talking about the festival as a whole? This is where the almost like the extended food and wine version. Thing. Oh, okay. It's like yeah, you're the right. holiday yeah. food and wine. I thought you were talking about. She was light. getting excited about. I was candle getting light. excited. <laughs> I was getting yeah. So he's gonna recreate. She the just holiday, heard Epcot, uh, and the only thing that she thinks about is candlelight. <laughs> so the festival of the holidays is similar. It sounds like to food and wine festival, yes. and that there's 16 holiday kitchens that have holiday 16? bites. 16. 16. So basically, we just have food and wine all year round. All yeah. year round. Because then after that the is coming the arts festival, which is the same <laughs> thing. And, and then um, flower and garden. Yes. And, and then, then food and wine again. And wine. The cool thing with the holiday, the holiday kitchens I found is if you do five stamps, you get a stamp at each cookie station. If you do all five, you actually get a complimentary completer cookie. So that's usually you don't get anything. If you do the food and wine festival and the passport, you get a passport. Oh my gosh, Josh this, is about to book cookie. his next plane ticket here. <laughs> that's exactly just to I get thought. that freaking cookie. <laughs> It's a cookie you eat or it's a cookie cutter? No, it's a cookie you eat. Oh, okay. And I assume it's decorated, but... So you have to purchase all the cookies or you, they're free cookies? I'm guessing you probably have to purchase them, but I did not see that. In the probably like I $50 done much... worth of cookies. I haven't, done, <laughs> I haven't done much research on this, but uh, this is the first year to my memory that they're doing something like this, but you said they've done it before. <laughs> my note said something about it being happening in 2016. And then coming back from that. So I don't know if they just skipped a year or what. It sounds like fun. And this, unlike the Christmas party, is something that's included with your regular admission. Right. And I know that they've always had a festival around the world. So what they do is they have, like, in each country, they have little right. teeny shows where they depict Their version that of Santa country's Claus. version of Santa. And they have, like, a little... Like, he'll say a little speech or something. Yeah, like a story time. Like a that's little story time. They call time. it the holiday storytellers. So, I mean, I've, that's all I've ever known about as far as that. And then, obviously, they've been extending the food offerings every year. Just more food and wine, longer. Mm-hmm. Keeping the booths out there. You might as well just make the booths permanent. <laughs> permanent I think they just re- redrape them with new theming. But then you also have one of the best things. What is it Buddy the Elf says? An elf is the only way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. No one <laughs> sings better than the Voices of Liberty, and they do Dickens caroling. They do, and they wear really awesome. cute clothes. Where do they do that? In um, around the, American Adventure. Just around or inside? Uh, they do it inside before the show. Okay. Yeah. And then those people also sing with candlelight, too. The Voices of Liberty sing with the Candlelight Show. This year as well, it's the very last year to see Illuminations. Woohoo! Holler! But this time of year, they do the holiday ending, which yes. is awesome. It's I remember going to this, and it felt like World War Three in the sky. <laughs> there are fireworks It's just like everywhere. a little tag on of the regular one. At the end, they just put more fireworks. And it's loud. I live close enough to Epcot. I can hear these at night, and it is loud every night. We we are happy that Illuminations is. I am so leaving. happy about that because that stale is, that show is stale AF. Like I'm over it. See, I love that show. I'm the uh, one third of the people on this podcast right now love Illuminations. <laughs> I don't. Love I'm it. in that third. I don't love it. <laughs> I think it debuted in what 2000 for their millennial celebration. I feel like that's the first time yeah. I remember seeing it. So 18 years is too many for one show. It's a long time. I'll miss it. But other stuff. Candlelight Processional, obviously. I'm going to let Stephanie talk about this, but that's there's a lot. To this do is an amazing show that's back. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing! <laughs> Every couple days they have a new celebrity narrator. They narrate the Christmas story, the biblical Christmas story. As a masked choir sings for your enjoyment. And it's beautiful. And they also have dining packages. You can purchase the dining package so you get to eat at one of the restaurants. And then you get priority seating for the show. They do three shows a night. And they have those for lunch and dinner ranging from $50 to $80. Jeez. 
So probably you're going to eat a meal there anyway, so you might as well get this package because then you can you don't have to wait in line. You can get a nice seat for the show. The show. So Stephanie you used to sing with this. How many songs? Like how many shows did you do a year? Um, it's many as she could because then many... she would get the tickets and resell them. <laughs> as many as I could. <laughs> Um, it just depended because, you know, I was also going to school at that time and you could only like the way they had it set up, you could only initially sign up for like 10 shows. And then if anyone else like wanted to give you their show or you wanted to come do standby, which meant you were there in case someone didn't show up, you could do more than the 10 you signed up for. So at least 10. And who was your favorite narrator? Cause they've got some big names. I really like Cheetah Rivera. And I like uh, Marley Matlin. She Who's is Marley Matlin. Oh, yeah. She's deaf, and she's oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. she has a like a person who so she stands at the podium, and then she has someone who does sign language with her, mm-hmm. and it's just so beautiful. I, I always have loved sign language a lot, and I've always wanted to learn how to do it. And she's just so full of emotion, and you know, watching someone do sign language like while they're singing and while they're doing like narration, it's so pretty. And Cheetah Rivera has a lot of spirit in her, too. I just know they have Jodie Benson at the end of the year. Jodie's like, awesome. I would love to see that, just to hear her voice. I would Lovely. close my eyes and just hear Ariel I think we, we saw Jodie Benson one year. You and I did. We might have. And then I've seen Jodie Benson for one, some random reason. I went to the University of Central Oklahoma. And while I was there, they brought her in to do a, a concert. <laughs> and so I have been to... Uh, a Jody Benson concert, which was awesome. Does she know. sing Little Mermaid songs? Oh yeah, she sang, and she sang. Uh, I think some Beauty and the Beast too. So and it was she free. Much, uh, I don't think it was free, but it was. Yeah, we paid. I think my mom, mom and I went and we paid for it, but it was awesome. It was in the a, a theater, a small theater on campus. It was really nice. Now she has a cameo in one of my favorite. I don't know if it's a Christmas film or not, but Enchanted. For some reason, I always think of this time of year, but she's got a cameo in that. Is that a Disney movie? Yeah, Enchanted yeah. is, but I'm trying to think where her cameo is. She's the secretary. Oh. There's a scene where she's in front of the uh, aquarium and they play a little mermaid music in the background. Okay. It's such a cute movie. I don't think I've ever seen You that. haven't seen Enchanted? No. <gasps> Fail. I could do a whole podcast on Christmas movies again. I don't know that that's but a that Christmas movie, a Christmas but it movie. feels Christmassy. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> Moving on. So that's, I think, all there is at Epcot um, this time of year. There's just a lot going on. The Disney Hollywood Studios, they have the Flurry of Fun, which I'm not quite sure what this is. The Flurry of Fun. Um, They do the Jingle Bell, Jingle Bam. The Flurry of Fun, I believe, is the projection on the Tower of Terror. Oh, that is really cool. So this is, if if this is what we're thinking it is, it's an ongoing um, projection show onto the Tower of Terror. And it's like every five minutes, there's like a different thing that they play I love this. So this is where probably my opinion is going to be very controversial to anyone who loved the Osborne Lights. But I don't miss the Osborne Lights because the Osborne Lights, while they were beautiful, it was always so freaking crowded there. It was just a big cluster. It just wasn't – once you got in there, it just wasn't that enjoyable because you couldn't like – you could hardly breathe. I really like this flurry of fun, which I think that's a stupid name. I didn't yeah, know some that of these what names. And then what was the other thing? The, the jingle bell, jingle bam, and I so believe this is the projection in front of the. I thought that that's what the projection show was when we went with Josh. Josh was like, "I want to see this," so we went down that street, and I was like, "Here it is. This is what it is." But then while we were there, then the fireworks started going off. I didn't know they had holiday mm. fireworks. Yeah, Jingle Bell, Jingle Jam is the fireworks, the holiday yeah. fireworks show. And it features those characters from, what's that, that? ABC's Prep and Landing. That's right. It's a, it's a little short, like a 30-minute um, holiday um, feature. Yeah, it looks cute. I mean, the fireworks show is cool. I, I really... miss the Osborne lights. I love the Osborne lights. Yeah. I love them yeah. too, but I didn't like the crowds that came with it. If I could just have a private showing, then that would be my favorite. So that's the Hollywood Studios. The Animal Kingdom, you can celebrate Great Diwali, India's famous festival of lights. I mean, it really didn't so give when, more information. Yeah, I saw, I, I saw that somewhere. Where, do they, where are they doing? What are they doing that for? That? And that's, I didn't know Diwali, they did any Christmas stuff. Diwali is over. I think it's just lights throughout the park. Kwanzaa? It didn't sound like there was Diwali. Different holiday. Oh. Yeah. 
And uh, I like going to Disney Springs if you guys are like shopping. Yes. They have beautiful decorations and they have a Christmas tree trail. The trail's beautiful. And they have a whole bunch of trees, like maybe like 15 trees, each decorated for a different movie. And they blow snow and they have different flavored cotton candy. Peppermint flavored cotton candy. And yeah, it's cool. They play Christmas music and it's free. Mm hmm. It's a bunch of something that I will say at studios. They've added some new decorations of the studios, like They're vintage, beautiful. like the vintage little statues that are light up around uh, in like the planter beds. Like little, they're really cute, like little peppermint girls and mm. little reindeer. It's like very vintage, vintage, very mid-century, and it's really cute. So that takes us through Disney. I mean, there's just Disney's huge. There's a lot going on over there. But Universal Orlando is not to be beaten. Um, at Universal Studios Florida, they're doing some things with Harry Potter this year. So Diagon Alley in London are transformed with decor and lighting throughout that the park. That would be cool. That would be cool. Yeah, because that feels Christmassy anyways. Um, they have special holiday treats and drinks. And then King's Cross Station has buskers playing holiday favorites. I had to Google what a busker was. It's when they have like improvised music out on the street. Huh. And it looks really cool, really festive. Huh. And then Universal, for the last few years, has done... Um, Don't they have a grinch myth? Yes, over at Islands of Adventure. But Universal Studios Florida, this is the older Universal. Oh, okay. They have um, <clears throat> the Universal's Holiday Parade featuring Macy's, which is also included with your park admission. So they do a parade that has the some of balloons. the Macy's floats. Yeah. I've never seen that. I've, he- I've heard of that, but I've never, I've never been to Universal during Christmas time. Well, and I didn't know this either, but they have live performances by Mannheim Steamroller on select yes, dates. Yes, oh, wow. And that's free with your free. admission. Which I've looked at doing concerts with them before. Like, that's really cool. They're that expensive. Really... <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's I've, awesome. I've looked at tickets for them in the past years, and they're pretty expensive. Oh. It would be cool to go see if you had a season pass to go see. Weren't you thinking of getting pass. a pass? I was, I was thinking about getting a Universal season pass. Because my deals. my sister's coming next year to Universal for a weekend, and then my parents want to do the same thing. So I figured since they're, you know, there'll be two, two rounds of people coming to see it, and I might as well get a season pass. Well, right now I think if you buy the year, you get like six a months. Year and a half yeah, I saw that. Yeah, but Islands of Adventure also has some stuff going on. Um, also at Harry Potter, so Hogsmeade embraces the holiday spirit as the shops are festively decorated with garland and lights. The Frog Choir singing seasonal melodies and their special treats and drinks to share. And then I think this is new. This is this year where they're doing projections like Disney oh, does yeah, on the Tower I saw of Terror that. on Hogsmeade. I've heard of I'm it. I'm sure that's really or Hogwarts cool. Castle. It looks yeah. awesome. Do they do fireworks? They don't. Not for the holidays, at least. I think they have their own fireworks show. I was going to say, does Universal do high fireworks at all? I think I've seen some. I've seen the driving past, home, but... like driving on I four. I don't know. Yeah. I haven't been to Universal in like the longest. And Harry Potter is awesome. I love Universal. It's so good. The Harry Potter. We had our passes and like we'd go and just do Harry Potter. <laughs> I, just <laughs> wanna, I, I just want to go to get a butter beer and leave. <laughs> the Transformers ride is really cool too. I haven't been on the Kong one. I want to do the New Hulk too. But there's also the um so Islands of Adventure, like Stephanie said, they have the Grinch. It's a Grinch and Friends character breakfast. So their notes say straight from Mount Crumpet, the Grinch brings his special <laughs> blend of mischief, turning your morning meal into an animated adventure. It's buffet style at Circus Mergurkus, uh, $35 for adults, and it's selling out. When I look, looking at availability, it was sold sure out on the 21st and 22nd I wonder if they already. have uh, green eggs and ham. Oh, Even, I'm oh, sure they cool. do. Even though it's not from the Grinch, but it's still Dr. Seuss. Love it. And they, I've seen pictures where they have, like, maybe for the prey people dressed they up. They have like, the, the real characters, like the Who's. Yeah. The Who's. With the funny the faces. <laughs> I've seen people in the, in the teeth. <laughs> <laughs> the funny faces and the teeth. If you could be here and see the face Stephanie made when she said the teeth. <laughs> yeah. So that's Universal. SeaWorld is next. SeaWorld oh, is my yes. personal favorite. Mine too. Yeah. I think in some ways SeaWorld beats Beats Disney. going to the, to the Disney party. Yeah. If I had to choose, like, I would go to SeaWorld. I would say that it doesn't quite... For the value. I would say based on the value Absolutely. only. It would totally beat it if they still had the Polar Express. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But, but they they used to have a Polar Express experience during the Sea World's Christmas thing, but now it's a Rudolph thing. Which, well, Lame. at least it was last yeah, year. Yeah, no, it's this year too. And Rudolph is cool. Have you watched Rudolph as an adult? Okay, recently? so we this is funny. <laughs> so my sister, my sister, uh, 
uh, and brother-in-law, they have my nephew. And so we watched it with him this year. It's kind of... It's dark. It's, yeah. They're mean. It's weird. It's dark. I didn't remember it being quite the <laughs> way it was until I watched it uh, this few weekends ago. And my gosh. It's well, kinda, I mean, yeah, they took all dark. the ugly... Re- they took all the ugly, like physically impaired things, and put them on an island. Yeah, and then the and then the king of that <laughs> island of misfit toys, when when the misfit people come, he basically tells them, "No, you cannot stay here, even though you are a misfit person and a misfit reindeer. No, you cannot stay here. Only toys." But then he himself doesn't seem to be a toy. <laughs> I might like, have to rewatch it. I haven't watched it in yeah, a few it's an years. Adult that has a whole different it context. just kind of like blew my mind. Like just the, oh, this, the what is the message that's going on here? Because it's and not how the, the father. Best. I always noticed how the mean the father was at the beginning. Like he was like, "Come on, son, <laughs> like buck up," and and he's just like, "I just want to play and I just want to have a red nose and I just want to hang out." With there Clarice. was definitely some sexism as well in there. Yeah, it was just um, it was kind of a mess. But it's still <laughs> anyway, fun. And the characters to... <laughs> they do at SeaWorld, they look incredible. They look just like the movie. Really? Which only they're much larger. Like, they're life-size. Like See, size. I'm just not... I want the Polar Express. Because yeah. I really like Polar Express. And I think they did a nice job with the attraction. That One of their, their Polar... Their polar attraction they turned into like oh the a, Arctic yeah, yeah so the all Arctic they do attraction. is it's very easy to do it too I don't know if it was I just licensing lost their li- they lost that they lost but it's very easy to just change the movie and then make the outside I can't imagine that, look like a train I can't imagine that Rudolph is more popular than Polar Express oh it's gotta be you think Rudolph is more yeah, popular yeah Rudolph's been around since the forties Rudolph is as classic but, a Christmas movie and also it is but I think maybe kids relate more to Rudolph. I think Polar Express is more of an adult um, thing. And I love Polar Express, but CGI Tom Hanks will give you nightmares. Uh, well, that I do like Polar Express, but <clears throat> yes, I don't like how uh, t- Tom Hanks is the same voice for all the characters. For all the characters. <laughs> I mean, really. But like I said, SeaWorld, they do have Rudolph. You can meet Rudolph, Clarice, Bumble, and Yukon Cornelius. Which one's Bumble? Bumble's the Yeti. The Yeti. The Bumble oh, Snowman. Yeah. And then they that have be cute. they actually have life size storybook vignettes showcasing the story. So as you walk past these scenes, it's life size scenes of, of the movie actually okay. happening in front that of you. That must be on that little trail, um you know where they have the fire. No. They have the little Christmas That's not town. Where it is. No? Uh-uh. No, it's I don't know where it is because I think I don't they know put where track. I'm going last... next week with my parents. Did we did we go last year? Yes. Uh, we, we didn't did. see any Rudolph stuff last year. We avoided it. Well, it it gets very busy because this again, it's not a hard ticket event. It's included with your admission, and those nights they don't do it every night like yeah. Disney and Universal does. I love so the the ice skating. I do show remember too. last year. Pro tip: I don't know if this is a tip because I don't really have an, a way to fix it. Is remember we went and we got there, and the line of traffic to get in was so long. Remember yeah. that? Mm-hmm. I don't know how you fix. If anyone has any recommendations, I guess you just get there really early before everyone starts coming to the Christmas thing. Or if you're gonna go, just go all day because that's what we've done in the past. <laughs> I just know. wonder if there's any other like ways to get around parking there. Like if you parked at the Renaissance, or can you park at the Renaissance? I don't know. Probably if you pay. Anyway, I have a pro tip I'll share with you when we're not recording. Oh, I have, oh. A pro, I have a pro tip too. The one that I use when I go to SeaWorld. Just park illegally. And Where walk do you park on illegally? Foot. Across the street. There's offices across the street and other hotels and just big parking lots. Oh. Well, y'all can Well, do your it own started research. when I, I used to live at this apartment complex that was literally right across, across the, street. the street. Yeah, I know, I know. So I used to, but you would have to walk through a hotel to get. So it was like my apartment, a hotel, and right. then SeaWorld. So we would just park there and then we would just walk. How long was the walk? Like five minutes. Well, I think to all of the theme park parking, I think a pro tip would be if you're staying within a close radius yeah. to the, just take just an Uber, Uber or Lyft. Yeah. But that's that a, as well. That's what I was thinking uh, too. But I wonder if the Uber driver would have to sit in that long line of traffic. Mm. Well. Yeah, because Whatever. I don't think they have a drop-off lane there. Oh, you're talking about the traffic to park. I thought you were talking about yeah. inside the park. No, no. no. The traffic to park. Get there is... early because there's other stuff to do in the park. Yeah. Other pro tip, if you are planning for next year when they do Black Friday, SeaWorld does awesome Black Friday yes. deals. 
including like buy one get one free on the front of the line admission. Oh, so you I can didn't go in that. and do all the roller coasters, the shows, and not I know wait. They did uh, Black Friday on that. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. But other stuff that SeaWorld does, um, they do the Winter Wonderland on ice, which is probably my favorite holiday show. It. The music is beautiful. The it's an ice skating incredible. show. Uh, Shamu Christmas Miracles. They do a special Shamu show with oh. live singers, and it's really touching. And then the Sea of Trees. <laughs> <laughs> It really is I think, touching. I will say, I think SeaWorld tries maybe sometimes a little bit too hard to be like Disney esque emotion. I always but laugh. This show works. There's the begin the beginning part of that show is like it's an adult asking a bunch of random kids what they think a miracle is. Yeah. And it, these little kids like of all shapes, colors, ethnicities. I think a miracle is my mother. <laughs> I think it's a miracle to be here at SeaWorld. And you're like Oh my god. It's cheesy as fuck. The show it's starts cheesy. with me rolling my eyes, but it ends with me <laughs> sobbing silently into my shirt. Like, <laughs> it's really cute. The other thing they do is the Sea of Trees, which oh, is, that is awesome. I like in that the too. lagoon. They have over 100 trees with the lights that literally dance to all the music. And I think that, that almost, if you did nothing else besides the trees and the ice, ice game, game show, show mm-hmm. you and then the little trail of little huts that sell chocolate and tchotchkes and things. Mm-hmm. I think if you just went for that, it's worth it. Yeah. Because especially the trees, it's just really beautiful. The trees are like the really... even the whole park is decorated really, really. Beautiful. Yeah, and they do snow as well in that yeah. particular part of the park. I like it. Sea World does a great job. On that. They get uh, that that event gets a thumbs up for me. Yeah, absolutely for sure. Thumbs for up all things, for like how good the event is, for the value. They also for have um, they also have the story of Jesus on stage. Do they still have that? I did not see that in my notes, but I think they probably do. It's it's competing, not competing, but it's the equivalent of what would be the Candlelight Processional, but they have the full... I think it's um, more of a play, though. It's a play. It's less musical. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, it's a play. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a play. And for the cost, they have yeah. annual passes at $10 a month right now, which I looked at. I'm like, why would I buy a one-day ticket as a Florida resident? Why am I paying, why am I paying 17 a month, then? It's they have different levels. They have different levels. Yeah. So can I? I could like reduce the the, the nine ninety nine has some block out dates, and you have to pay to park. I don't want to pay for. And the higher level passes, you get like a buddy pass. Yeah. A couple okay. times a year. Yeah. But that's Sea World. Sea World is awesome. Yeah. No, it, for Christmas. What do we have next? Next we have Ice at Gaylord Palms featuring a Christmas story this year. Which runs through January 6th. You watch the hilarious family tale, a Christmas story come to life through interactive ice sculptures and displays. Call your bank so, so you can take out a loan to park. <laughs> we, Paul and I did this together. Brian and I did this together last last week. Ron was supposed to come, but then he Bailed. changed his mind. But I think he's going with his parents Ron didn't here in about a week. Today. That's all your notes? For, oh, okay. Ron's putting aside notes. That's I'm page like, that's, one. We're, we're done? on page two now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So this is something they do every year at the Gaylord Palms Resort. And the Gaylord Palms is a convention resort. So they have one like convention room that they do all... Everything in there is like completely made of ice. So... And the, they always have a theme. And it tells the story... Like as you go along, it tells the story of a Christmas story. Yeah, it was really good. They give you a jacket and... You are you playing video? I was recording video. Oh, you can edit this out right <laughs> Ron's trying to uh IG story over here or uh, snap. I never have anything to post on my social media. I'll, I'll tell He's you. He's never he, okay. So, um, if you guys listened to our uh episode last week, we went to see a Christmas story play at Winter Garden. And if you want to go, Garden. we have a, a code here. If you want to save 20%, you can use Garden 18. If you want to buy tickets for Gaylord. Yes. Or even better, uh, this is probably a better deal too. They have a uh, Groupon. Groupon, but. But it's only weekdays. We anyway. found so, out you have to buy ahead of time. Is it? We just. It's weekdays. That's what it was. Yeah. I thought it was because you had to buy ahead well, of time. Well, you do have to buy. You have to buy ahead of time, I think. Because we just thought, oh, we'll go hop on a Groupon, but then it wasn't available to purchase. So I thought maybe you have to buy it. I think it's also weekdays. The Groupon confused me too. I looked at the Groupon and it, I think, was thirty two ninety nine per adult. No. But then when you go to the ICE website, it says the tickets start at twenty eight ninety nine. So I'm not sure that the Groupon was necessarily a good deal. 
But it says from select nights, too, so there may be cheaper nights. So the ice is running through January 6th. No, it's no oh, longer available. Oh. I was going to say that, too. They keep posting and they keep selling out. Okay, so right now, the ice at Gaylor Palms on Groupon, the deal is sold out, unfortunately. But keep checking because they, they keep reposting it. Okay. And then, obviously, you can always use the Garden 18 code if you want to save 20%. And then it's just, there's ice everywhere. I, oh, see, here, I had. here it is. Yeah, see, thirty two ninety nine. Is it for two people? No. That's pretty much what we paid on the website. Well, we, it was 28 plus all the tax or whatever. Plus if you have your 20% coupon. But another thing that, that you have to factor into this is the cost of parking. And the parking was $26. And that was just a little bit much. But the ice, the mind. ice, the scenes made out of ice for a Christmas story were really well done. And we're uh, gonna post some pictures on our. We IG. will post some pictures. I, I I enjoyed it more this time than I did when I went many years ago. Do you remember the theme last? I think time? it was just like Snoopy or something or <laughs> Peanuts. I don't know what it was. Going back to the parking pro tip, might be we'll talk about this in a little bit. But parking celebration. And then go to the celebration festivities at night. We'll talk about that in a little bit. There's a and then maybe Uber from take celebration. An Uber. Yeah, you definitely don't want to walk, but Uber or Lyft. Yeah, you you could. I could see you doing that. We never thought about that. I mean, we thought about. I I Ubering. suggested we didn't Uber. know where to park though. I think that the price to Uber probably going and coming back would be the same from where I am would be the same price as, as parking because it is what twenty four bucks. <laughs> It's too much. I really think that it should be discounted because I think I would go every year as long as I could get the really cheap rate. I would probably go to this every year if I could get. I just have a problem paying for that parking. The other thing, I've not been to the event. I'm going with my parents next week, but looking at the website, it looks like there's a lot of add-ons when you, once you get there as well. Yes. Like they have snow tubing mm-hmm. for twenty dollars. You can decorate a gingerbread house for thirty dollars. They have a story time with Mrs. Claus for $16. They have a Build-A-Bear workshop where you can build a bear. The one thing they had that looked kind of cool was a naughty or nice escape room. So oh, Jack Frost has that. put your name on the naughty list. And to get it off, you have to escape the escape room. That's cute. So that was cute. But I didn't and see we that. saw a Cirque du Soleil show while we were there. A show? A yeah. show. So if you go into the into the atrium of the main... Like the lobby of the lo- Gaylord. Po- portion of the hotel... They have a Cirque du Soleil, I don't know, Christmas Dreams or something. Yeah, it's a 30-minute, like, mini, very mini Cirque show. But it was cute. And it was complimentary. You don't have to pay for ice to see that. You could just pay for the parking um, or however you're going to get into the resort and just go and see it. I thought it was, obviously, it's a good value because it's free. Yeah. Anyone can go and see it. Um, I definitely think that it's a great way for Gaylord to bring in more people. Oh, we asked uh, the gal at the Elf on a Shelf dinner place. Oh, yes. And there are some resort, some of the restaurants that will validate well, parking. They, yes. So possibly if you wanted to make a night out of it, you wanted to make a reservation, have dinner, go see so my ice, question get parking would validated. Be, but my question would be that we paid for parking as we drove in, not as we exited it. I, I don't know about that. So I wonder if... Uh, it actually works better if you valet and get your valet. I wonder if they'll validate yeah. the valet. Which I would almost just... You might as well just valet. I think she said it wasn't that much more to valet. We were trying to figure out all the pro tips. <laughs> My pro tip, totally changing topics, would be to Google the Elf on the Shelf character breakfast. This looks like the creepiest character meal in all of Central <laughs> Well, when we were trying to see the character, but we didn't, like, we went up to the hostess booth and I was, like, trying to, because it's kind of, like, open. It wasn't, like, I could see the people that were eating, but I didn't see the elf on a shelf. I was thinking probably it was creepy. It's, so I was looking at the website. The concept is really cool. I love the elf on the shelf. It's a buffet with classic breakfast favorites, but it, the elf himself looks so. <laughs> oh, we're looking at pictures when now. He's staring at this family. Omg. And I mean, the elf is kind of a creepy concept because he's watching your kids to make sure that they're they're good. But when he's bigger than your entire family, he's it's really creepy. He's like, his eyes are wonky. Wow. It's almost like what eye. you might see in a haunted house, <laughs> right. like a demented doll. 
I bet kids scream like crazy. His eyes are really like that. Yeah. Like now and again, when he's six inches tall, it's not that terrifying. Uh, but when he's 16 feet tall. I think they should have hired a child to be the elf. Don't you? <laughs> think about it. Like yeah, when you see your elf on a shelf, life. he's always little. Elves are always little. So why would you make the elf a huge character? Well, also the proportion of the head is just too big. It should be it should be a really skinny person. Yes, and really then a, skinny. A, 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 you know, a round head. That's yes. it. Yeah, well, it's a little frightening. There's always room for improvement. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about celebration then, because that's kind of very close to Gaylord. The yeah. Gaylord. So that's uh, in celebration. They call it now snowing. You can get information at celebrationtowncenter dot com. <laughs> it's their twentieth annual event this year. It's completely free. They have ice skating. They have um, strolling Charles Dickens style carolers, photos with Santa, horse drawn carriages, train rides, and it snows every hour. So there's just a lot to see down there. And downtown celebration is really cute to begin with. Yeah. They have good restaurants. I recommend Town Tavern is good. They have a little uh, Starbucks. You could grab a little yeah. hot bev. Columbia is good too. Walk around. Have you been to the Market Street Cafe since it's reopened? Um, I will no comment other than I will never go there again. Did, since they no reopened. comment, but I'll never go. <laughs> I don't care that they reopened. I haven't been since that. I love the, I love the tavern. Abs- the tavern is one of my favorite. If you places. know the history of Market Street, then you just should not go, even if they just put a new facade on. You know, you just made me think. I lied in my introduction. I did not come down here for the Disney College program. You did not. I did, but I actually you came lived here, here before that. You lived I here came before? here for school. Oh, for I, I lived in Celebration on Market Street. You forgot really? about that yeah, time in your life. Did. did you live above the shops? I did. Third floor. <laughs> it was so With cute. like how many roommates? Just me. It was a little one bedroom apartment. Oh, bougie as AF. Well, this was 20. Oh my God. This was 15 years ago. 16 so you years went ago. to UC. You so rent was to, a lot cheaper. Where did you go? Valencia. They have an Osceola campus. Yeah, yeah. I was really into Disney. Like, I literally, I'd go he to school. He was that nerd, that And then I'd come home, nerd. I'd go to the Disney theme parks, and I lived in the Disney town, because Disney owned Celebration at How the time. How many years did you live in the Celebration? Just one. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't expensive? Well, it was... But I feel like back now, then, that's bad. when it was actually something. Now, yeah. Celebration is nothing. Yeah, but housing was a lot cheaper back then. I think I paid $770 a month. Did you work? Mm-mm. I was a full-time student. Oh. And I went to the theme parks a lot. <laughs> I was one of those people. I didn't know that little uh, tidbit about you that you lived in uh, <laughs> Celebration. But pro tip with now snowing, um, parking can be a challenge, downtown Celebration. Mm-hmm. The Celebration School has parking available for a $5 donation. So it's very easily within walking distance. That's cool. Yeah. I always because. park behind that, like where the parking is for those apartments. If you can find a spot. If I can find a spot, that's where I park. But there's, you you can get a spot. You'll just have to walk a little bit. Yeah. But not as bad as our event we went to in Winter Garden for the uh, Light Up Winter Garden. And then not as bad as what experience Ron, uh, Corey, Steph, and I had last oh. night. Oh. Trying we to tried to, to go to Light, light Up UCF. UCF cause we wanted Which, to is talk that on the list? I took it off the we'll list because I had Should nothing we, good to say Are we done it? talking about celebration? Yeah. So we should talk about UCF. Well, yeah. we can't really be mad at UCF. I think I'm that yes, we can. After we found out the information about the playoff game, we probably should have chosen another night. So basically, all roads were blocked. Well, did you look? So I don't know. I'm going to say so. Light up UCF is a, allegedly a big event at UCF where they have all kinds of allegedly. lights. Allegedly, <laughs> they have attractions. They have a Ferris wheel. And the highlight for us this year was that they do movies projected on a two screen, two story screen. Two story screen. I'm saying that right. Um, we were going to see White Christmas. So a week beforehand, I went onto the website to confirm the times and found out they had canceled the movie. Because I think of they just canceled event. everything. But they didn't say that. They said they just canceled the movie. Yeah, I saw. So we're it. like, we'll still go. We'll check it out. We'll talk about it on the podcast. You could not get to that arena. You could like not get literally. To we talked to like three cops. We rolled the window down. We, we would get to a road close sign. We would say, "How do we get to?" Um, we were looking for the arena that it was in front of. Oh, you can't go there. Oh, you can't go there. Oh, you can't. I said, what? So we we drove out there and turned around and came home. But we did eat bento out. We had UCF. dinner at bento. Which there's a bento five minutes from here. But that bento <laughs> in, by UCF is much better than one. And there were a lot Sand of cute Lake. boys there because we were on <laughs> college, college campus. campus. Hashtag creepy. <laughs> <laughs> That's us. <laughs> 
Do you realize college students now, what, they're like born in the 2000s now? Yeah. I know. Ooh. Oh, That's scary. It makes me feel Lord. so old. Again, we're 15 years from being 50. Ah, stop saying <laughs> that. You're Listen, so wrong for that. You're closer to 50 you than might we are to 20. Be. Stop. Stop. <laughs> so yeah, Light Up UCF, from what I've heard, it's fun. I went 10 years ago. It's the first place I saw Polar Express, and 10 years ago, it was so much fun. I don't know if the event has changed because we couldn't get there the last night. Well, obviously it has. Yeah, it's not go- happening. Google it and make Honestly, sure Honestly, I'm open. over it. Like, I'm, I don't know that I'll ever make an attempt to try to go again. I've always wanted to go because I hear about it, and I like... Was it... I'm guessing it's mainly students who go? It's a big community event, and I do know it was closed, but UCF won last night, and it was a very big game for them. It's like two years in a row now they have, I think, an undefeated season, or they won some... I don't follow the sports, but it was a big deal. <laughs> That's what I say. Well, uh, good for you, Sia. Yeah. We did see, on the way home, we passed by a few beautiful homes that were nicely decorated. And we said, oh, light up UCF! Ah, light up UCF! <laughs> But it was a nice fellowship in the car. It was. The car ride. So Ron decided to take it upon himself to do a round robin and ask us what our favorite Christmas song was. Oh, I think we should do that now. <laughs> and our favorite Christmas song was. So that was what we talked about. We on should the way do home. that. Let's our favorite it. movie and Christmas song now. Let's start with Ron. You know what? How, gonna, much, let's lo- add how, much, to how much longer in your list do you have? I don't. I have three more things and it'll go by very quickly. Okay. This is like an <laughs> intermission. So can we add one thing to that though? What's your favorite Orlando christmas event or holiday event okay ready go go you you're first oh me you're the guest um i would say movie i said def it's either elf or white christmas white christmas is the most classic movie and elf just makes me laugh um song white christmas by bing crosby it gets no better than that and then event in central florida i really like celebration it's free it's easy that's kind of my pro hide getaway place where there's just no there's no crowds down there it's so nice it's true also sea world for paid event i love sea world brian moi you all right so <clears throat> what did i say last night so my favorite movie i really like um the family stone is it that or a i think it's the family stone it's with um sarah jessica parker let me google this here the Family Stone. The Family Stone. It features um, Sarah Jessica Parker, and it also uh, features. How oh, f me? I'm editing. The girl from uh, the Notebook. Why does it only have three stars? I would give it one. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> oh damn! That's I the first f bomb he's ever dropped on the show. I love it. Sorry, mom. <laughs> Who else is oh, Claire Danes is in it? Diane, Diane yeah. So it features Sarah Jessica Parker, Claire Danes, Diane Keaton. Rachel McAdams, uh, my yeah. favorite actress. I mean, it's an all-star cast. I, I like this movie a it's, lot. I found it so depressing. It is it is very sad towards the end. It, it does get a bit emotional, but I really like this film. Uh, my favorite song um, is uh, Spirit of the Season, which there's several renditions of it. I think the... Um, f- do the fireworks have it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Magic Kingdom. And then I believe that Polar Express has that yes. song. Mm-hmm. That's well. the only place I know it from. I didn't... I yeah. thought it was for that movie only. Yeah. Uh, I think it's... I don't know if it's rather new. A newish song. Like a mo- more modern. I'm guessing it's more modern. But anyway. oh. uh, as far as my uh, favorite attraction or thing to do, I think that this is something that we didn't really talk about on the podcast yet uh, in this episode. But I think my favorite thing to do is go around to all the different Disney resorts and oh, see the yes. way they're decorated, oh, yeah. uh, especially along the um, Magic Kingdom um, monorail resort line. monorail line. So the Grand Floridian has the big gingerbread house and their Christmas tree is beautiful. Um, Contemporary has uh, a gingerbread uh, display as well. Polynesian, we were just there. Their Christmas tree is weak. It's very weak. For it being a deluxe resort and all the, like all the other deluxe Their resorts, their tree's have about huge as big as my trees. tree in my uh, family room. Yeah, it's it's really it's sad. So maybe again, fifteen years ago, because it sounds like I haven't done anything in fifteen years. I did that one day <laughs> with some friends. We decided we were going to go to every single mm-hmm. Disney resort and get a picture in front of every single tree. You did it. It literally took like sixteen hours, but we did it. 
Animal it was fun. It was Who'd exhausting. you do it with? Uh, <laughs> She's such friends. a jealous. She's such a jealous person. Who did you do I'm it with? Just wanting to know if it's somebody. It I wasn't know. me. <laughs> Travis and Chase. Oh, okay. It wasn't me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you were not invited. I don't think we were friends. <laughs> Fine. Yeah. yeah. Animal Kingdom uh, Lodge has a great uh, tree. I think Wilderness Lodge does. Most of the deluxe resorts have great trees. And the Grand beautiful. Floridian has a great tree and a gingerbread house. Yeah, the ginger. Yeah. If you haven't seen the Grand uh, Floridian's gingerbread house, it's quite beautiful. The Contemporary has a tree so big it doesn't even fit in the building. That's right. Pro tip: if you go to the Contemporary, the Polynesian, or the Grand Floridian when there's a Christmas party, you can see the fireworks from the resort. Yes, that's a very good pro tip. That's a great pro tip. And they will pipe the music in, especially the Polynesian yeah. along the Polynesian beach. They'll pipe the music in to whatever fireworks display is going on in Magic Kingdom so you can hear that Christmas music. The same thing the guests are hearing in the park you can hear. That they paid $100 for. Yeah, $94 to $125 that you can save. You can buy a lot of food at the resorts with that money. <laughs> Although, do they charge to park at the resorts now? Or nope. is that just for overnight guests? That's overnight guests. Overnight guests. Yes. You can still park if you're going to dine at the resort or if you're just going to go visit. Generally, they'll let you park. Uh, sometimes if there are really busy they won't let you park so just respect your security guard whoever (laughs) greets you but no i really like that i like going around and seeing all the christmas decorations at the resorts and that's something that you can do for free free 99 and it's less crowded yeah it is and yacht and beach club is a nice area at christmas as well even the boardwalk the boardwalk is nice generally they all the deluxe I shouldn't say generally, but a lot of them have gingerbread features. I so. think the boardwalk, boardwalk, the boardwalk does is a I carousel. Think. I think one of them has yeah. a carousel. The boardwalk or the beach club, like a gingerbread oh. carousel. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So Stephanie, what's it's your, your turn. favorite Christmas movie? Oh, music well, my favorite Christmas movie it probably is A Christmas Story. And my favorite Christmas song is Mary Did You Know? And if money was no object, going to Disney would be my favorite. Going to Magic Kingdom, going to the party. And not even going to the party, but just being on Main Street during the Christmas time. It brings so many memories to me. Because like, that's like when I moved to Orlando and I was doing my college program. It was during Christmas time. And that's when I met like a lot. That's when I met you guys and... I just had so many good memories from that time. So smelling and like they play the same music that they played then and the the decorations and the snow falling in the castle all lit up. Like it just gives me all the feels. Yeah. Yeah. I would say um, as a pro tip, if you're looking to the college program, I I personally think the best semester to do it is fall semester because then you're here for the holidays, like obviously Halloween and Christmas. You're here during that time, so you get to experience. It's all the best times because those are my first memories. Because I had never been to Walt Disney World before my college program, so those are my first memories of Walt Disney World is during those months, and uh, it's definitely a special place. I spent a lot of hours there during the Christmas season, like. All those long hours that we work during the holidays and the parties and the holidays and but it's good, good memories. Again, moving forward fifteen years, do you think you <laughs> do you think you could do it again? The college I look program? at these jobs. I don't think I'd be able to survive out there for that amount of time in the heat on your feet. I don't know. No, I think that I, I could. could I just wouldn't want to. I, would, <laughs> I think that we were the last. Our program was the probably the second to last program. What was really what the college program was because shortly after our college program they started doing phone interviews and yeah. i feel like having stayed on with disney i felt like the quality of it's, of it's come down cps or college program uh students has gone down um just i don't know at this point i feel like it's anyone who has a pulse and is willing to move here they'll take but uh i would do it again for sure it seems like that program that josh was on was like the one that just broke it like they were that group was bad they didn't get good after that i'm totally kidding well, i thought they were just okay i mean because i know he's listening <laughs> so back to christmas stuff yes continue with the list so i have two more three more things um the first is just a plug it's 
a two-night event, but Central Florida Ballet will have their 18th annual pyrotechnic nutcracker. Pyro- pyrotechnic? Nut- pyrotechnic. Nutcracker? So it's a fire... That sounds like some advanced sex move. This is fancy. It's a fire-enhanced Cirque du Soleil-infused take on the nutcracker <gasps> that they do take at me. the convention center. Where is I it? I want to go. The Orange County Convention Center, the Linda Chapin Theater. It's December 15th and 16th. Do they have a theater at the Orange County Convention Center? That convention center? center is huge. Well, I know it's huge, but I didn't know they had a theater. Yeah, they have everything. Okay, so when is it and how much is it? December 15th and 16th, it is, I, oh, tickets are 30 to $65. <gasps> I want to go. This has actually been recognized as one of the top five productions of the Nutcracker in the nation by CNN. Wow. And if you do this pro tip, they have a 20% discount to patrons at Opac Steakhouse on iDrive, Cuba Libre at Point Orlando, and the Sugar Factory. So you can get a show and dinner for cheap. How do I get a discount? Yeah, I assume you just show your ticket. It's on the website. Oh, like a discount at oh, the restaurant. So at the yeah. restaurant, yeah. Oh, I thought you said I could get a discount. No, you buy your ticket wah, and get a discount wah. for dinner. Okay, what was that? Let me mark that down here on my... <laughs> He's taking my... notes <laughs> while we're recording. <laughs> the 15th the and the 15th 16th? The 15th and the 16th at the Orange County I Convention I really want to go. Would you go with me? We'll talk about it after we're done Fine. recording. <laughs> I might go with you. You'll go with me? Yeah. You'll take me on a date? I'll, Remember, we used I'll to go to on dates before it, you got married. Yeah. <laughs> you used to take me, you used to buy me flowers for Valentine's Day, chocolates. We used to go to the movies. I love my husband, but I had my best Valentine's Day ever with Stephanie. Yeah. Do you remember when you bought me that big teddy bear and sprayed it with your cologne? Can you say that you had I don't. That sounds sent creepy. it in the mail? That sounds creepy, but that's that when like you lived Maine. in Maine and you used to send me like all those boxes of like random crap. There's not as much sun up there, so I would do something like that. <laughs> but it looks like a great event. The other two events are both kind of downtown. Um the Eola Winter uh, Eola Wonderland Christmas tree show. It runs every day through January fifth at Lake Eola. Where it's weird a, to say Eola by itself. Eola. It's so of, funny too. Eola. It, it, it rolls out the tongue better if you say Lake Eola, in my opinion. Eola. Eola. Uh, yeah. Every day from J- till January fifth, it's a seventy-two foot Christmas tree that comes alive with lights and music while the fountain displays seasonal lights. So, hmm. where's so it's the tree? free. The tree it's is, downtown. Is the tree on the fountain? The website didn't say. Remember, we Eola saw Park. them setting up the tree. Remember when we were down there for that little market? Mm. And I was like, look at that guy. He's staring at that guy who's putting up a Christmas tree. He was taking <laughs> oh, pictures yeah, of a Christmas tree that was half constructed. I would do that. It's a 72 foot Christmas tree. That's probably the biggest one in Orlando, maybe. It's like seven stories. That's cool. Um, but yeah, that's every night. That's free. And then the last thing I have on my list is Frosty's Christmas Time Lounge. Now which we is had open year round. We had like things to say about this because I went to Frosty's like two years ago when it first started, like within its first five months of opening. I thought it was great and cool and interesting. Ron went with Josh a couple weeks ago and he wasn't crazy about it. Mm-mm. But you're not really a bar goer. I'm not, but I'm a Christmas guy. And I think this is maybe what happened. See, what had happened was, <laughs> I love Christmas. So I was expecting a Christmas experience. It was not a Christmas experience. It was a bar with a Santa Claus and some decorations and a train. And it snowed once. And their drinks are cool. They have the snow cone drinks. Like yes. they do a strawberry rhubarb mojito. Mm. Josh had a Nightmare Before Christmas, which had actual squid ink in it. It was disgusting. But It tasted disgusting? It, that one did. The rhubarb one was right. delicious. But it just, it felt like a bar that had a Christmas theme as an afterthought. Like it did not feel like I didn't it was get, themed for I Christmas. I didn't get that at all when I went. But like I said, I went, you know, anytime a business just opens, you have to take it for what it is. <laughs> so maybe it's come down a hill. But I loved it. They, when I went, they played like every five songs, they played a Christmas song, like an upbeat Christmas song, like Mariah Carey Christmas. And they blew the snow and they had a, a digital countdown calendar how many days till christmas they had a mailbox where you could put a letter to santa they had a life-size santa statue like i loved it they had a train that ran around the bar they had all of that except for the music i did not hear a single christmas song and i went the week before thanksgiving so it was close to the holidays um i was just i was very disappointed well i made one of those things where i built it up ahead of time i still think it's cool um it's located at um central East Central Boulevard. So 15? it was near some other bars. You, did you walk to the joysticks? Yeah, we walked ones? to joysticks, which was just around the corner. Yeah. That was 
expensive and busy, but it was fun. Really cool bar. So, and, you know, if you go and you don't like it, there's other stuff. And I will say Frosty's, their social media is cool. They did an event a few weeks ago where if you showed up, I think it was like in a Christmas onesie, you got a buy one, get one free on a drink. Oh, that's Which cool. Which if they do theme stuff like that, I think is cool. And it may have just been the night I was there. I don't know if they had an event going on or what, but it just, it seemed off. Well, I love that place. Maybe we should give it one more go. One of these evenings. I'll go anytime. Totally anytime, not any place. Related. We also went to Taco China. So good. What's Taco China? I think it's no Tin and Taco. <laughs> I've heard of Tin and Taco. Taco China. I don't know. No, what there's that, a yeah. Tin and Taco was so good. But yeah, Chris. Yeah, downtown. I was looking at their website, and then one of their sister bars is Stardust. That's where we do the dirty bingo. And Aku Aku isn't that? The That's the Tiki, Tiki Lounge. Lounge, which is next door to Stardust. Yeah. Hmm. So like I said, it wasn't a bad experience. The bar was very nice. It was well decorated. It just did not have a big Christmas theme, I thought. Well, if you find yourself downtown, and the snow cone tracks were unique. I've never seen that. Can we have? Can I talk about a complaint I have? <laughs> what is Why it? Look at me when you say that. Mall at Millennia's Christmas decorations. <laughs> I love their decorations. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I They're just so I love them. I need a little a refresh. I need there an update. There needs to be a refresh. Oh no, I love what they do. And they had my gosh, they had Santa. I think the week before Christmas he was out. Yeah, and they I have a special. They, they have a special ones. event when the first night Santa comes out. They have a special event that you can. Yes, do. I don't I, know if they did it this year. We went in years past, and they actually had a drone come in, and it looked like Santa had jumped out of the drone, <laughs> and then he uh, what do they call it? Like, repelled off of Nordstrom's <laughs> to light up the Christmas tree. Oh it wow, was an that's doing awesome the most. Event. I do like what Santa wears there, though. He doesn't wear the classic Santa suit. He wears, like, a more bougie Christmas mm. attire. <laughs> yeah, I just don't care for, like, I don't know. I don't care for Mall at Millennia's Christmas decorations. I have heard that the mall, the Santa Claus at the mall can be crazy. And I think a pro tip, I think I heard this from about Millennia. You can sign up for a time ahead of time or get a ticket when you get there so you don't physically have to wait in line. Oh, that would nice. be awesome. That way you can go be you spending money and shop yeah. up and And you don't have to have come screaming back. kids in line. Ugh. That's nice. I don't want to do that. Also very random going back to Disney. Disney Springs has Santa. Yeah, and they you do. you can bring your pet with you to get pictures with Santa at Disney Springs. Anytime or I thought they just had there's one particular times. pet day. Yeah, there's like Where's one Santa? Day. Where is Santa now? There, By the Springs. Christmas tree trail. Okay. Um, have you ever taken Kira to meet Santa? I have not. Why? I'm not sure how she'd do at Disney Springs. It's so busy. There's so many people. Well, you take her for walks all the time to celebration. Yeah. We you should try it next her. year. Take her. I love my dog. Kira. All right. Well, that was a long list, but, you know, it's time to wrap it up now, I guess. Just like we're going to wrap up our gifts. Um... <laughs> How long have you been saving that one? <laughs> it just came to me just now, actually. Um, yeah, so if you have any more, anything that you know about, any of your Christmas traditions, Christmas, Christmas, Christmas traditions, Christmas. you can go ahead and let us know. Yeah, because I know that these aren't all of the of the. These are just the things that there, we've there. come to do over the years. and. But if you have some, let us know what you do in Orlando to celebrate Christmas uh, during, you know, the end of November and through December. Fine. Sound effects? I'm trying. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening. Thanks for coming to join us, Ron, Thank for you. your favorite holiday to talk all about days. it. You did such a good book report. I give you an A++. <laughs> you should see his list. His list is quite extensive. I take Christmas very seriously. Bullet serious. points. We have subcategories, uh, amendments. I'm sure that he's going to laminate this and put it <laughs> in the archive. I'm going to have you both sign it first before I get it right <laughs> We're going to do a giveaway, actually, if you would like the notes that have been used in episode 23. Thank you guys so much for listening. Make sure that you follow us on Instagram at Orlando Out of Context. Visit us at OrlandoOutOfContext.com and listen and subscribe on Five I Stars on iTunes, Five Stars, Spotify, and Google Play. And make sure you leave us a review. All right, guys. Until next bye. time. Bye. Ron, you have to say bye, bye. M- bye. louder. Bye bye. <laughs> I mean, the closer you are, the louder you are. That's why I left that pillow on the chair. You don't need to lean over.
This is not 1940. <laughs> Good afternoon. <laughs> That's why I put the pillow on there is to keep you. Yeah, but then I feel from, like I'm gonna fall off the table. From leaning back and getting lazy. Me lazy. <laughs>